Today we're going to look at gov.uk. My name is John Ferris and I'm going to take you into the Gateway site and look at the whole issue to do with applying for those jobs. Registering with Gateway is something that you'll find you can do through this particular site. This is the gov.uk website and as you can see straight away if I take you to the left hand side of the page we see the universal job search process and we're going to click on this particular process and you're going to see that one of the things they're very keen on doing is you actually searching and looking for work <clears throat> so by clicking on that button there here we have the opportunity of registering Today I'm going to register here and I'm going to take you through the process. So I'm going to say that my name is John and I'm an advisor and what we're going to do is we're going to your email at benfits to work dot com You have to put your own email in. I'm using this as an example so that we can actually see it in, in uh, operation. And we'll go through the process. <clears throat> we can see further down that we have a password requirement and that has got to be eight to 12 letters and numbers. And part of that process is an actual fact, make sure you don't put the word password in. Now, the name and the surname on this particular page is you're registering. It's likely to be um, a process for a job seeker that will actually assist them in, in um, obtaining information. As a job seeker, the gateway account is going to become more and more important um, and it's going to be more and more relevant uh, because you're going to be looking at it when you're signing on with the advisor and you'll see why in a few minutes. So I'm putting in a password. And I will go to the submit section. The Government Gateway account has been created. We have a, a user ID here, and we also have the um, opportunity of a printed copy further down. And it also states that you will get that information there within the email facility and it says that you actually have to activate that so one of the things we can however do is just copy our number there our reference number so that we have it for later on when we're re-registering now if i was to go into this particular account i will see here that i have the verify the email account uh, within the inbox and you're now about to see the email that gets sent through. And we can read here that the there is a verification link that will expire on the 24th um, of the 1st, 2013. Um, 6.29. Uh, <laughs> I have to say that the, today's date is the 23rd, so it gives us exactly one day to verify this particular information. So take note of that. So we click on there and we know that our verification has been successful. And by clicking on that button there, we go into our details, the profile option. Now, here we can select our area. 
You'll note it says on each section here we have the word required. Middle name isn't however required, but um, we can put in um, something like um, two, five, XX for example. Interestingly enough, further down the page it actually asks for the email, which is a little bit bizarre because they already know the email address. However, we go for the whole process. One of the things I would like to promote, if you struggle with this sort of uh, issue, with this kind of concept, if you come to Benefits to Work, we actually operate a service that will help you deal with the registration, deal with the information that's coming back, and give you all the support you need. That is what Benefits to Work has been set up to do, to help people who are on benefits deal with the IT side and deal with that information that may be really important to them at the moment. So we're going to go for um, Advisor. No, shall we go for customer service? Customer service is quite a popular one. So we can go for customer service. So we can actually have the skills um, matching our particular need. Now it does state the word add there here on the left hand side. That's quite useful to note. But it's also going to send us information based on this box here to our email account. And realistically, it's going to feature as part of the key issue of your contract with DWP if you're signing on. I'm mainly taking talking here about those people that are signing on because those people who are signing on are going to be accessing this resource on a very regular basis. And you'll see more in a, in a few minutes. So I'm leaving the next one down as a tick as well. Now, I personally am not ticking the I authorized DWP to view my accounts. <coughs> I'm actually avoiding that one. The reason why I'm avoiding that one is because I don't actually sign on. However, I would like to point out that we are now on this page. I've already made one video that highlights this particular page, but I'm also going to just click here on the prefer not to complete the questionnaire, which is a useful little area because it means that we can now scroll down our page and which comes right down to the bottom here and we can save it we see here our save and continue button and there you go your account is set up without having to do all the information that you want now you'll see here on the right hand side we have our welcome section and you can also see that we're logged in we can also, and this is going to be extremely important with the Department of Work and Pensions, our activity page. And you can see the reason why this is important, because we have each section is dated, it's stamped. So as each job you apply for, you will find that it is in actual fact going to uh, directly stamp the information. So if we click on there, and then we say go for Lincoln, yeah. and we search, we have a distance, let's say 10 miles. Maybe you need to increase it a little. That's an interesting, challenging issue, and <coughs> we have to vary it. But here we have a call centre advisor. So, for example, if you were going on to that, 
you would see of your paying conditions and all the rest of it. And we'll actually advise you on how to deal with that sort of information. <coughs> but as you apply for that, you have the option here of applying for the post. And you'll see the rate of pay is 17,000. We also have the CV option. We can build our CV, upload it from the computer, copy and paste the CV. Now that might be quite relevant if you're applying for the job. You'll see the job search notes, um, which may also be extremely useful because if you record those, First search. We can save that, and you'll notice it's on our screen. It'll actually input that information with it dated. Now, if you are signing on, the advisor can see this information, see the notes. We have a message section here as well and to some degree they're going to be looking at the information that we can see throughout the system here including the customer service posts and they're going to be expecting you to be looking at those posts and applying for those posts once you've added the information and the skill base that you've put together so quite a lot of information on this video I'm hoping it's been of some use um, there is quite a lot of uh, resource there and well worth checking as much information out as possible you'll find that your inbox may get a little bit busy with the information as it comes in um, you'll find that the alerts will come in as we can see here and you also see that you get the email um, on each alert on a regular basis coming up as alerts which you can print off so there we go my name is John I'm with benefits to work and on the doll.com cgss.org we're more than happy to help you with your job applications and uh, really help you with that search for the search for that right job for you. Um, we look forward to uh, seeing if uh, the work is right and can be found. Any information you need, don't hesitate to contact. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video.